Uh, I've been here since uh, September. Um, prior to that, maybe we'll start with the starting of my career. Uh, like everyone else, like I, I started in patrol. I spent a good, uh, I think it was four years there. That's where I kind of learned um, all the basics and all the fundamentals about policing. And then uh, from there, I wasn't sure where I wanted to go. Um, uh, I eventually got drawn to the emergency response team. I went there in a, a part-time capacity basis to, to start off, and then I eventually moved to a full-time position. Uh, the majority of my career actually was there. I spent uh, just under eight years there and dealing with all kinds of kinds of fun and dynamic calls, whether it be uh, barricades or tactical vehicle takedowns or uh, kidnapping files or hostage rescue files. So really diverse uh, in, in that aspect, a lot, of, a lot of reactive files, but a lot of fun there too. Uh, I came back from ERT and I went to the road for about a year as a supervisor, and then I moved into the major crime unit. So uh, I was there for about uh, three years and I started off as a detective there and then moved up as a corporal and then I became uh, the sergeant there. So I spent just about three years there and again, just uh, kind of the different side of policing. Uh, the first being very reactive and going to calls and um, dealing with pretty dynamic situations to the, uh, probably a little bit more of a controlled, deliberate, methodical environment where decisions are made uh, uh, with a little bit more time on your side. Uh, so we got to work some great, inter great and awesome files there. Uh, and then uh, this last September, I, I moved into the admin role. So I took over for uh, the former Sergeant, uh, Jeff Scott. Uh, and I've been doing that since September. So my focus has been on uh, recruiting, which is what uh, brings me all here to talk to you guys today. So uh, I'll turn it over to Staff Sergeant Eamon Ward. Hello. Yes, uh, Eamon Ward uh, started policing in New Westminster in 1999. So I'm coming up to my 22nd year of completion in May. I uh, started off in patrol like everyone else. Um, I then transitioned to our plain clothes street crime unit, uh, where I spent about three years. Um, <clears throat> from there, I transitioned over to the integrated homicide investigation team, which I spent another three and a half years there. Came back, I went to our major crime unit, uh, spent uh, three more years there, got promoted to sergeant. Uh, got transferred uh, as a sergeant over to the street crime unit, was the sergeant of the street crime unit for a few years. Uh, ended up back in patrol. Uh, then I uh, was, was lucky enough to become the acting staff sergeant in patrol. And I got transferred to our criminal investigative division. Uh, I was a, sta a staff sergeant there. I got promoted to staff sergeant. <clears throat> Spent a few years there. Then I went back to patrol for three years. And in October of 2020, I transitioned to admin section where I am now. <clears throat> Most of my uh, background is uh, investigative units. I uh, spent a lot of time doing uh, some investigations of the homicide unit, major crime, and street crime unit. So that's kind of like all of the opportunities that I've had. Um, you know, when we, when I've, I think I was one of the first people in the US when we joined the integrated homicide team to go there. And that was quite an experience. Uh, I was pretty junior still at the time. So it was a steep learning curve, um, but it really gave me a lot of investigative skills to bring back to New West, uh, to the major crime unit. Um, and that's where I spent most of my time. So that's me in a nutshell. And who like going off, Jeff Scott, you're up. I think, it, yeah, I think it's over to me. Um, so like uh, Sergeant Kumar said, I just came out of our recruiting and media unit. Um, and so I'll just kind of dial back. And I think what's important for uh, anybody watching or listening is recognizing that kind of the four of us or five of us uh, with Haley here, uh, but four of us as police officers have totally different career paths. Um, and so I think that's a really important takeaway when you're kind of looking at a department our size um, is recognizing kind of the diversity of careers. And so, uh, again, they all started at the same place, start in the patrol division. And while I was in patrol, as I started, um, I kind of took on a secondary role, which is in our Marine unit. Um, kind of one of the interesting things with us having the Marine unit is it's pretty much our police boat, at least at the time, uh, it was our police boat. We would 
take calls up to Pitt Lake, all the way the Fraser River out to Georgia Strait. Um, and then Vancouver would take over kind of toward Vancouver Harbor. And so that's one of the unique elements of New West Police that sets us apart from a lot of other agencies is that we do have a police boat and it's a secondary uh, position that you can take on. So my primary role at the time was patrol. My secondary role was on the Marine unit. So I was able to go out on the boat and just kind of uh, change the day uh, up as well. Uh, as well as I, I started taking on um, uh, an interest in collision analysis and then collision reconstruction. So um, part of what I have done since I think 08 up until kind of present day is collision reconstruction, which is um, investigating fatal motor vehicle collisions, you know, whether whether there's culpability or there's some sort of uh, criminal offense or it's, you know, just a um, I hate to use the word accident, but uh, even just kind of an accident that, that it wasn't intended. Um, and so I've been investigating those for a number of years. I'm our senior reconstructionist. That's something I continue to do. It's kind of off uh, kind of a, a secondary role to what my primary role is, but I've been doing that and kind of um, developing that skill over the years. And uh, we have a partnership with Delta Police, Abbotsford Police, Port Moody Police, where I also get an opportunity to go investigate out in those cities um, with that uh, with that kind of training. So um, both operationally Marine unit and then investigatively kind of in collision reconstruction. There's only a couple of us at the department that have that. From there, I moved on uh, into our operational support unit. So I had a chance to ride uh, bikes, do a little bit of work with um, some of our invest units and our, our street crime unit um, as well. So operational support really kind of is uh, uh, touches on a lot of different areas within the department. Um, I had a chance to spend to kind of make my primary role for a few years into collision reconstruction when I went to the traffic unit um, when we had a, a fair amount of collisions that required it. And when I wasn't working on that, I was, had a chance to ride the police uh, motorcycle. So. Uh, it's been pretty cool in my career. I've been able to drive the police car, ride the bike, ride the motorcycle and operate the boat. So um, a lot of different uh, toys for lack of better words that I've been able to use. Um, after that, uh, I moved back to a patrol shift as a corporal. So kind of a, um, a first level, uh, you know, road supervisor. And then I moved in from there to our recruiting and media unit. So I had a chance to work in human resources, do all of our uh, recruitment and hiring for both sworn and civilian members. Uh, I did that for just shy of six years. I worked closely with Haley uh, on our communications. And so she's our strategic communications coordinator. Uh, and I worked uh, with her and I would do the media releases. So anytime there was a press conference or a news conference or anything like that, I had a chance to go out into the media and uh, answer some difficult questions kind of on my feet. And uh, now Sanjay gets that chance. Um, but that was a, that was a really uh, interesting kind of career path that I went um, in the administrative world. Uh, and now I'm back on a patrol shift, uh, watch commander on a patrol shift. I've been there for uh, a few months now, six months, somewhere in that range. Um, kind of when uh, Sergeant Kumar stepped into the uh, recruitment and media role and I transitioned over onto a patrol shift. So that's essentially um, it in a nutshell. Our department also really, you know, values um, people continuing their education. And uh, a few of us have gone on and continued our education path. So um, they were super supportive as I worked through a master's. And now I'm just in the last kind of couple courses to a PhD. So it's, it's one of those things where the department, the organization also values um, that as well. And it, and it uh, impacts also some um, some income. So there's a lot of different paths. And like I said, um, the three of us so far and, and now with Kevin um, sharing his experience have totally different career paths. Uh, and that's what really helps or sets new us, I think, apart in some sense is that you can have a diverse career. And for me, it's I'm kind of at the halfway point. So I still have another half career to go. So over to you, Kevin. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, I'm excited to be here next hour or so. And absolutely like Jeff and Sanjay and Eamon mentioned is um, in New West, we are fortunate to have a bunch of different opportunities. Uh, and it's not just us 
uh, most uh, members um, when you talk to, you know, I'm 16 years into my career now, and I've had similar opportunities when it comes to operation of different police vehicles. Uh, I started like everyone else in the patrol section. Um, <clears throat> but while there, I as well uh, was a Marine operator. So I was on our police boat, um, had a lot of fun patrolling the river and uh, and hand, heading out, helping with uh, Vancouver with uh, the Festival of Light celebrations. Um, and then from uh, within patrol as well, I started uh, uh, showing some interest and, and getting training to be a collision analyst as well and was part of that team uh, for a short time. And then I started to go in a slightly different direction, uh, um, leading towards more plainclothes work. And uh, before I got there, I ended up in our uh, operational support unit as well, where we would uh, ride on mountain bikes and patrol the city. And, and I loved that part of my career. I spent uh, almost three years there where it was a lot of uh, community engagement and talking with people uh, on beautiful sunny days, riding down on the boardwalk. Um, and then we also started to get into some drug work there. And I was a uh, plain clothes uh, UC. So I was obviously an undercover officer there and started to do some, some drug purchases and uh, some exciting work that led me over to our street crime unit, which uh, from there we got into some bigger drug files and property crime files and targeting of, uh, of criminals and uh, started working more in the surveillance world. And uh, I spent three and a half years in our street crime unit. Um, and then from uh, from our street crime unit, I went over to the CFSCU unit, which is a secondment out uh, at um, Green Timbers with a bunch of agencies and working larger files, larger targets, where I spent, uh, again, just under four years full time in a surveillance uh, unit there, where I had a, a lot of really uh, interesting opportunities, some really exciting files. Um, I got to become an instructor on the method of uh, surveillance that we teach and we're currently now offering in-house at New Westminster, which is quite unique for how small we are. Um, <clears throat> and uh, after surveillance, I came back and, and I had an interest. I always like to run with um, sources or confidential informants. So I, brought, I came back into our CIU world, which is a crim intel world. Uh, I was there for just under two years. Uh, when I started to show an interest in my career uh, with the diversity and how many opportunities I had where training was really starting to uh, interest me and I started to help out with our, our part-time training team, which is, consists of about 15 members that we rely on uh, quite a bit and, and we pull from all different backgrounds of policing, whether investigative or forensics, um, plain clothes, surveillance, drug work, uh, major crime work. So. The background within our cadre will then help with the training, which I was doing at the time. And uh, after that, I joined our training section full time in 2018. And that's where I currently am. I'm uh, the acting sergeant in our training section. Um, and it uh, it's very busy, but it's also a lot of fun because I get to not only help out with the training of all of our members right from the recruit level to uh, the chief, but I also get to work with the uh, testing of new equipment and police equipment and trying to keep up to date with what's out there and, and offering our members uh, whatever equipment um, we can. Uh, and I think in New West, what really stands out is, is what we can offer when it comes to equipment and uh, everything from clothing to gear, which I'll talk about a little bit later. Over to you, Haley. Thank you. Thanks everyone for sharing that information. There's a lot of expertise here. So now since you've got to learn a little bit about our, our team here, we want to know a little bit about you. Not to worry, it's gonna be really easy. I'm gonna launch a poll here and it's going to ask, where are you joining us from? And I'm gonna launch this, give you a few moments to answer and then I will share the results with everybody here. So are you co coming from Metro Vancouver, outside of Metro Vancouver, somewhere else in BC perhaps, or outside of the province? Let's see. 
Okay. All right. Any last entries? Okay. So looks like we've got 71% of the people here are from the Metro Vancouver region, 5% uh, from elsewhere in BC, and 24% from outside of British Columbia. That's awesome. Fantastic. So I'm going to pass it on to the rest of the team who are going to share with you some more information about the department and what sets us apart from others. Thanks, Haley. So yeah, we're, we're gonna discuss a little bit about uh, what we have to offer, what New West has to offer and why you should choose our agency. Uh, we all, just like we mentioned, we all bring different things to the table here. And I think that's what, what Jeff already said. That makes, I think, New West unique. Uh, uh, I mean, for me specifically, I had no idea that I wanted to pursue a career in ERT, and then I wound up spending the bulk of my career there because I didn't realize how much I actually, uh, how much I loved it. So um, I'm gonna let Jeff start with this one. Um, and then Jeff, we're just gonna feed off you here. Right, so um, I think it's important to know that, you know, there's a lot of different police agencies in the Metro Vancouver uh, area, of course, with the RCMP detachments um, and different departments. And so we want to kind of give you a good understanding of what is New Westminster Police? Um, and what do we have to offer to you that kind of sets us apart from other agencies uh, within the area? So uh, I think it, You'll also probably want to know some specifics about um, maybe some specific questions. We'll have time for Q&A uh, and some tips of the trade of how to be successful th through our recruitment process. So we'll also talk about that. Um, I'll just kind of talk big picture about the department and then I'll kind of get turn it to Kevin to speak about some of the uniqueness about our equipment that we have as, a, as an agency. We keep referring to it as like a small agency. So um, in the grand scheme of things, we're kind of that mid-sized police agency. So we're we're not super small. We're not super uh, huge. We're kind of that mid-range. We have about 140 police officers who work here, around 37-ish civilian members who work here. And so that kind of gives you a context of the size of our agency. Um, there's about 20% of our officers work outside of the building. So I'll talk about what that looks like. Um, because we're that size of a building or that size of an agency, um, it's really um, important to know that you're not a badge number here, you're a name. And so I know that si somewhat sounds cliche, but it's really actually quite true. So I know all of my colleagues, um, there's enough of us where you still have a personal life and there's separation from work. So you have that work-life balance, but there's um, few of us uh, here where we can actually get to know each other on a personal level. So to me, that's that's a benefit. Um, and it's one of those types of cities where you get all the big city types of calls. So it's in a small geographic region, you know, 15 square kilometers, but uh, there's never really a dull moment. So if you're looking for um, policing where you're constantly uh, you know, being challenged and and day to day, you're you're going to unique different types of calls. This is certainly the city to work in. You know, you see some other rural cities where they have different sort of challenges in their city. Um, we're kind of an urban center. You know, we've got Surrey to the south and Burnaby to the north, um, and a lot of sky trains that come through come through the city. So that um, gives us a lot of unique policing challenges um, with people coming through the city. So there's no shortage of work and you know your colleagues. So to me, that's a draw where you have the big city calls in a smaller area where you know who, you co who your colleagues are. Um, generally speaking, you know, we've got all, all kind of uh, the usual things in a contract. You know, if you're looking for medical service plan, extended health, annual leave. So there's lots of vacation, lots of um, time. So you can have that uh, work-life balance um, municipal pension plan, you know, some, when I first started here, it was, I was 21 and I didn't care, could not have cared less about a municipal pension plan, let alone knowing what it was, but it's actually really, really good for when you go to retirement, uh, and your work and you're earning a fairly good percentage of your, your overall wage. So that's actually a really important key. Um, part of the opportunities within the department. And so, like I said, the four of us who have spoken, um, 
you know, we've got diverse career paths, diverse kind of um, experiences. So there's two sort of things to take away from that. So now you hear about the department size. Um, there's, uh, there's sections within the department and then there's sections that we call as secondments, which kind of work outside of the building. So within the building, you know, like, like we keep saying, it's kind of that mid-sized police department. We still have all of the career options available like many other larger departments. So within the building, there's our patrol unit you know, that's that's kind of the, the frontline police officers in the in the patrol cars, major crime unit. So it's a team of detectives who take on larger investigations, criminal investigations. We have a street crime unit, which is uh, basically surveillance. They work with uh, undercover officers and and kind of focus in on um, specific types of crime types. Um, we've recently started a gang suppression team. So that's a. Uh, that's something that's uh, in development right now, but it's fully staffed, um, you know, with a sergeant and a team of constables to kind of tackle some of the gang problems um, in our region. You know, we got the traffic unit. So if you want to ride motorcycles, training unit where Kevin works, uh, and then of course, many community services sort of units. So youth resources, mental health, domestic violence. Um, we got a sexual assault invest team, criminal intelligence. So. Those are all kind of within the building um, and uh, as well as forensic identification. So those are all within the building. And then if you wanna, if you wanna have a, get into a position where you kind of get into a regionalized sort of uh, position, you know, we're part of many, many different integrated sections. So um, Staff Sergeant Ward, he was part of uh, IHIT, which is the Integrated Homicide Investigations Team. So they take on investigations with uh, partnering agencies all throughout, well, kind of the Southern District, I guess, of British Columbia is where they zero in on. So uh, lots of different types of work. We're part of the Integrated Emergency Response Team. So uh, people who join ERT, which is what Sanjay did, they now are LM, like lower mainland wide. So a lot of different very are diverse types of calls that our members will go to. So it's either in an urban environment, it can be a rural environment, it can be, you know, almost like a forest type of environment. Um, so there's a lot of different uh, challenges with that. Um, you know, and there's many, many other units. Kevin was part of the Combined Forces Special Enforcement Unit. We're part of BC Hate Crime um, and many other uh, positions. Like I said earlier, there's about 20% of our department are in those positions. One of the big, I would say, uh, draws to a department our size. So if you're if you have a specific interest in a type of work, whatever your career trajectory is, um, some people might think, oh, it's a smaller department. You don't have that many positions available in the career path that I want to go into. In my time in HR. Uh, what the trends we were seeing is we may have one position in a certain area or maybe two positions that open up, say, in the Combined Forces Special Enforcement Unit, and we really only get one or two of our officers applying for those positions. Whereas with the larger departments, you may have, you know, eight, nine, ten positions come available, but you're competing against 100 or 200 people for those positions. So statistically speaking, um, the career path that you want You'll, if you work hard and you got the knowledge, skills, and abilities, you'll certainly get there. So um, for me, that's a big, big plus. You know your, your colleagues. Um, you can walk down the hall and you see the chief. You know, the chief will know you by name. To me, that's, that's a big, big draw. The fact that I know who my boss is. I know who my bosses are. Um, and with the open door policy, you know, I don't have to pick up a phone to some random other rural or... Uh, um, different office building, I can go talk to them face to face. So those are some of the reasons, um, specifically our department size, uh, the type of work, the diversity of the work and the availability of the work really keeps your career interesting. Um, on the equipment side, I'll just talk first about our police cars. And this is the type of uh, leadership that we have here. So, um, when Ford stopped using the Crown Vic, they just kind of discontinued it. We needed to 
look at different patrol car options. So there was the uh, Ford Explorer. There was another, I think, Ford Fusion or Ford Taurus or something like that. Um, I think Chevy had a, a type of car and there was a couple others. So rather than, um, you know, our management or administrators saying, this is the car you're going to use, we actually put it out to our patrol officers, officers who are the people using them day to day. And we essentially took a poll uh, of preference and popular demand was, uh, was the Ford Explorer. So we now have a fleet, a patrol fleet of Ford Explorers. So that's the type of movement and impact um, our boots on the ground, our day-to-day -day officers have on the direction of the organization. So to me, that's a huge, huge uh, feature of working in a department like New Westminster Police. Um, and then on the equipment side, uh, I'll, I'll lean into Kevin to kind of speak to this, but we do have some uniquenesses because of our department size and the support we have from our management and our leadership and our city that we're able to do some, some interesting things with our equipment that other departments may not be able to do. So Kevin, I'll, I'll kind of over it to you with things like the RWIN and CEW training, and then maybe even with um, some of that digital training that we have as well. Absolutely, Jeff. <clears throat> I'm excited to be here um, for this purpose because a lot of the equipment and stuff is dear to me because I spend a lot of time trialing it and researching it and getting members to trial it and provide feedback, uh, members from uh, every different patrol section. Uh, we're trying to get the biggest, obviously, pool of, of testers out there and then uh, providing honest field tested uh, feedback and then providing those memos to the bosses who, uh, when good reason is put on paper, uh, don't question it. And like Jeff said, it's not a matter. A lot of the time, uh, a perfect example is undergun lights for our handguns. Every member, every member in our apartment is issued an undergun light. Um, it is about $270 for the undergun light we use. And so when we are looking at 132, 134 members, we can afford that. Um, and it's no questions asked. Uh, that is uh, just the drop at the beginning. Um, when I first came into training, uh, when you look at equipment, there's so much equipment out there that you really can't keep up with technology. However, there are things that uh, we need to look at uh, as police officers and recognize that there's uh, equipment that can help us, uh, one, come out at the end of our careers healthier and in better shape, both physically and mentally. Uh, and duty belts is a big, a big uh, part of the strain due to the amount of gear that you will carry on your belts. So one of the first things I looked at was uh, uh, duty belts that were more supportive for members that created, uh, that were more comfortable, that held the gear tighter and, and, and just overall a lot less back strain and, and pressure on their back. So right off the get go, uh, we started researching different belts and we came up with, uh, there is a bunch of options and we came up with essentially recognizing that not uh, any two members are built exactly the same. And we provided four different options that members can now choose from, uh, which are greatly uh, advanced compared to what you are typically issued, uh, you know, three, four years ago and from other departments. So this belt is about a $400 belt all said and done once we piece it together. But the feedback from members, uh, that are now wearing these is, uh, is huge. They're, you know, they don't have pressure points. They're padded. So they're a lot more comfortable at the end of the day, the fatigue is nowhere near what they are after a, a day shift or a night shift. And, uh, and the feedback has been really good. Um, the, another uh, obvious piece of equipment that we have to wear and we use is our body armor. Uh, I'm really proud of this one. This is one currently that I, I literally am uh, in the mix of getting approval. However, I, I believe it will get approved and we have over 10 members measured and already ordered up and we have a, a bunch in the field. And it's a, a Safari Land product that, is uh, a new form of body armor that is uh, about a half of the weight and uh, you can barely tell you're wearing it. So it's a huge, uh, a huge difference when you wear body armor 
uh, if those of you that are members or that have worn body armor on this panel, uh, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. And this armor is literally about the equivalent of uh, 20 sheets of paper pressed together is how thin it is. So it's, uh, it's going to be offered to all of our members. Uh, one of the benefits of it is a 10 year expiry. So if you've ever worn armor, I, I saw a question about from a 17 year member. Um, if, uh, if you know armor, it's typically replaced every five years. And it's like a, a comfortable pair of jeans where once you break them in, you don't want to give it up. But the expiry date is the expiry date. And at New West, we replace everybody's armor at five years. And so by getting a new pair of armor at five years, now you have to break it in again. This stuff is good for 10 years. So there's a huge adva advantage to this new armor that, uh, again, it's a little bit more uh, costly at the beginning. But uh, the benefit to our members' uh, overall wellness is huge. Arcteryx jackets, uh, we, we supply all of our, all of our members, um, both an outer jacket, which is the Alpha SF out jackets in the Arcteryx gear. And then we give them a choice between the uh, Cold WX or the Atom LT for an inner jacket. And that's across the board, everyone gets them. We currently are running 511 uniforms. Uh, and that's in the uh, strike pants and shirts. And the feedback has been great. We are trialing some new uniforms. Uh, however, it's gonna be tough to beat the uh, 511s because everyone seems to really like them. Uh, at New West, everybody is given the option to replace your uh, duty boots every two years and you get uh, a $350 allotment to do that. So you can go ahead and, uh, and go down to um, any of the local stores and pick out your the boots of your choice and you get 350 every two years to, to replace those. Uh, our plain clothes allowance is great. It's uh, $1,250 per month in, uh, and that goes towards all of our uh, detectives and our street crime units and everyone that's wearing plain clothes. Uh, we are, and I was a part of this and I'm really proud of it, we're one of the uh, first departments for patrol in Canada to start transitioning over to a red dot site for our duty pistols. Uh, currently, we're, we're working with the Shield RMS, which is a waterproof version. Uh, it, it fits on our Glock 17 9 mil handgun. And, uh, and again, it, all of us have undergun lights. So this red dot site is uh, incredible. It's two eyes open. Um, it's much easier to shoot. And at the end of the day, um, we are leading the way in Canada with this particular site system. So super proud of that. Um, not only are we putting them on all of our, our duty pistols or, or optional for our patrol members, um, but we're also putting them on our training guns. So we had our training guns actually milled out the slides on them so we can fit this training, uh, obviously red dot site onto that gun. Um, we care about our members uh, right down to cleaning their guns even. So uh, a lot of the time, if you've cleaned a, a weapon before, a lot of the chemicals that we use, it's carcinogenic. So we researched and found a cleaning tub that's available to all our members. It's, it's uh, in our um, uh, gun cleaning area, essentially that our members can access 24 uh, seven. It's very simple to use. It's environmentally friendly. The solution inside of it uh, basically is a uh, organism that eats away any of the greases and um, essentially it's carcinogenic free. So it's a, uh, it works wonderful. Everyone that uses it, even members that come into our department from outside other agencies, uh, rant and rave about it. Uh, all of our members are given like top notch when it comes to PPE equipment, everyone's given a full face respirator as well as a half face, uh, shield, obviously, um, you know, this day and age, it's important. We recognize that now. And, uh, and everyone is supplied uh, with full PPE equipment. Um, when it comes to rifles, patrol rifles, we are uh, currently allowing uh, all patrol members to be patrol rifle operators once they go through the user course, but that user course is available for everyone. Uh, we're running the Colt Canada uh, C8 carbines with a uh, Aimpoint Micro for those that know about it. Um, all of our patrol members are CW operators or at least given the chance to take the CW uh, operator course and uh, are provided access to a CW for their patrol shifts. Um, one, of, uh, one of the nicest pieces of equipment that we have in patrol is our Arwin. It's a less lethal platform. It's a multi-launcher. Um, it, it basically is a five shot 
multi-launch uh, Arwen round that is a less lethal projectile. It's amazing because it can reach out of uh, up to about 30 yards in its effective range. And this piece of equipment is typically seen uh, to be used by ERT or SWAT teams and stuff like that. In New West, we have um, a number of shared ones for all patrol members to take out. So we typically on a, a patrol shift, you'll see at least four or five out on any given day being uh, deployed. This, uh, it, it is an expensive piece of equipment. I just purchased a couple more. They're about $5,000 each. But again, because we um, uh, were a little bit smaller, we can provide those to all of our members. And again, it is for every patrol member is given the chance to take that training. Um, like Jeff and myself, we, we have the uh, police boat and everyone in patrol is given the opportunity to take the training and become an operator. And so it's not a special section that you will be there full time. It's we want Marine operators on every single patrol shift. And even when you go to uh, specialty sections in case patrols tied up, if you're in the office and a Marine call comes in, you can get down to our boat and uh, deploy. So everyone in patrol and I should say everyone in the department is really given the opportunity if they wanna be a Marine operator. Uh, our crew section now, which is our crime reduction unit, that is the uh, mountain bikes. I know that uh, they currently are researching. There's a lot of hills in New West, so they're currently researching e-bikes. And uh, if that happens, uh, I'm all for it because I think actually in heavy traffic, the response time uh, would be quicker than a car. And on top of that, the uh, community engagement would be awesome. So we in New West are part of a uh, regional municipal training center, which is a large uh, facility for training where we have access to something called a Virtua V300 simulator. So it, if you look it up online, it is basically five screens or 300 degrees of, uh, of uh, simula simulations where it's uh, state of the art. Um, the range capability is absolutely incredible, but also the um, uh, just running through scenarios with our members in a completely controlled environment where we can run them consistently the same way every time they're pre-recorded. There's hundreds of scenarios and the training is absolutely top notch. Um, every year, uh, all of our members will go through four training days. Those training days are mandatory. However, they're either done while you're on duty or you're going to be paid straight time to take part in those training. So that will include your uh, qualifications, uh, whether it's use of force or firearms, and then other topics. So for example, this year with COVID and the way we're doing this right now, um, our first training of the year was done virtually through Zoom. And um, it, uh, it members are very positive in, in that they can do it from home and, and we're doing it remotely, but we're offering those training sessions to continue through because we uh, we want to make sure we give those four training days at a minimum. Uh, every member is given an allowance per year to be able to go on their own time uh, to go to an indoor range uh, close by where they have a certain amount of ammunition and uh, the actual drop-in fee at the range is covered as well. So members that want to practice with their firearms are able to do so. Uh, I have children and I'm super proud of it. We have, uh, we have a, a kid's Christmas party that's funded by our NWPOA and uh, it's a big event. Um, unfortunately with COVID, it was closed for obvious reasons this year. It was canceled, but uh, every year my kids, they're getting a little older now, we're, would always look forward to it. So it's another great uh, event for all of our members. Uh, another big one is the soccer school that we put on. Um, it's huge uh, in the community. It, set, it basically fills up within minutes of being released. Uh, and the type of uh, commitment to it from the department is if you are working in a, in a section and you're able to go and coach at this soccer school, uh, and you don't need to be a soccer player, it's, it's uh, essentially a fun camp for kids. We have everything from bouncy castles and uh, you know, the fire department comes with their water hoses and it's a, it's a great community event, but you will, you can do that while on duty 
um, or you can actually come in off duty and, and take part in that as well. Um, every member, like Jeff mentioned, we're committed to uh, education. So every member is given $750 per year towards uh, increment courses, which the increment program, I won't go into it too much, but essentially um, it is how you can get a pay raise. So in New West, if you have, uh, if you get five uh, basically educate uh, college level or equivalent courses, then you get an increment bump at 10 years, which is 5%. So essentially after 20 years of service, you can top out as a constable at 115% if you do your increments. The $750 education allotment can be used towards those courses, uh, which you do on your own time. However, the financially, the 5% bump is completely worth it. And uh, it it's... Uh, to build on the wellness perspective, we've included now courses. The course list is uh, a couple pages long at least. It's growing every year. Members put submissions in all the time to have courses approved and uh, it goes through a panel and usually they're approved. Um, for the most part, uh, some interesting ones that have recently been added is some fitness certification courses, uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu from accredited schools, so if you're going to a gym and you're paying a lot of money to go to jiu-jitsu training, $750 of that can actually be used towards uh, from your education towards your gym fees. Uh, you, obviously, you can become a motorcycle uh, operator, uh, different firearms classes, everything like that. There's some really interesting courses that can be done, not just strictly post-secondary schooling. If it's going to make you a stronger member for our police family, then uh, typically it will be approved and on that list. Those are just some of the stuff that we're doing currently in training. And uh, yeah, there's uh, it's ongoing. Over to Haley. Thank you. Thanks, Kevin. That was lots of awesome information. Um, we're going to jump to speaking more about the process of applying for to work with our department. But we've, before we do that, I want to get another poll going just to inform our discussion about applying. So I'd like to ask, um, I'm gonna launch this poll. So what describes you best? Are you currently employed as a police officer or are you interested in starting your career as a police officer? So like with the last poll, I'm gonna launch this poll, please, uh, select what one applies to you, and then I will share it with everybody. Okay, just a few more seconds. All right, so it looks like we have got a bit of a kind of approximately 70-30 split. So 30% are already employed as police officers and 70% are looking to start their career in policing. Well, welcome everybody. And uh, I am now going to pass it back to the recruiting team to talk a little bit more about how you apply. And after that, we will jump right into the Q&A. And I noticed that we already have some people who know where that Q&A icon is in the menu and have submitted their questions. And you're welcome to do that if you already know what you wanna ask. So uh, I will pass it along to the recruiting team. Thanks, Haley. So uh, I'll briefly talk about the process. I will go over uh, what, it's, what the requirements are for a, a member who's never gotten into policing and, and is looking to apply, and uh, for those of you who already are members. So uh, the first step, obviously, is to go to our website, have a look at it, uh, and then you'll find uh, the minimum requirements there if you are a member, if, sorry, if you're, if you're not a member. Uh, make sure you look over the minimum requirements and, uh, and see if you fit that first. Once, you, once you're able to fit that, you'll be directed to uh, the application. So the application is, is pretty detailed and it comes along with the security clearance questionnaire. 
Uh, it's a fairly lengthy, but also thorough. And, and we do that for, for a reason. Uh, we want to learn the most about you. So when it comes time for the suitability interview, uh, we already have hopefully a decent grasp of who you are. I know some agencies put this off till a later stage in their application process. And this isn't to, to deter anyone. Uh, just like I said, we, we want to know who you are. We want to make sure that you're the right fit for our agency and vice versa, that we're going to be a good fit for you. Uh, so once you go through that, there's the application, the security clearance questionnaire, and then there are other requirements on there, submitting your uh, driver's license, uh, birth certificate, uh, first aid, vision and hearing, uh, post-secondary uh, transcripts and uh, high school transcripts. So it's all listed on the website there. It's pretty self-explanatory. And then once that, once you have that, you submit that to us. Uh, so, and that, that's the same process for everyone. So I'll say that if you are a lateral member, if you are within uh, a serving member within the province of BC, uh, you uh, miss the next two steps. The next two steps are a, a written exam and a POPAT. So if you are, like I said, if you're a serving member already in BC, you are not required to write uh, the written exam or do the POPAT. If you uh, are uh, a new applicant, that's gonna be the next step for you. It's gonna be the written exam and Pope Pat. So our recruiting team uh, will get a hold of you. Uh, they'll, they'll, they'll send you some dates uh, to write the, uh, write the exam at our police department. And then we contract out our Pope Pat to a third party facility. So uh, the one thing I will say, and I encourage you all is that if you are, if you've never, if you've never done the Pope Pat, please look at videos online and do some practice Pope Pats uh, ahead of time. Uh, visually, it looks a little deceiving, uh, I think, in my opinion. I think a lot of people who I've talked to, uh, applicants I've talked to, it looks looks pretty straightforward, and it, and it is for the most part, but it can be deceiving. It is quite taxing on your body. It's a lot of anaerobic uh, exercises that people aren't necessarily used to, so I encourage you to try that out prior to actually running our POPAT. Uh, once you complete the written exam in POPAT, you are then invited for a suitability interview, and that is my, when myself and Eamon Ward sit down with you, and we ask you uh, a little bit about yourself to learn who you are, a little bit about your family, uh, what you know about our agency, about the city of New Westminster, and then we ask you behavioral-based questions. Uh, the behavioral-based questions, the competencies you can find on our website, uh, they're pretty straightforward. And I, I, I encourage you guys that when you are preparing for the suitability interview, look at uh, Google online, if you're, not, if you're not aware of it, the STAR format. Uh, that's how we like the questions answered. And the reason for that, it provides a lot of context and detail uh, and really brings your, uh, your, your, your points and your highlights. It, it really allows us to see that. Uh, once, you are, once you are done the suitability interview, uh, you move on to the, what's called, and this is for, for, for new members, uh, it's called the police recruit evaluation. So it's essentially an in-house assessment center that's run by our training section, uh, Kevin Todd and, and, and his crew there. Uh, it's just a way for Kev to kind of measure. Uh, he he builds you, takes you through some team building exercises, some individual exercises, uh, and then he, he scores you at the end of that and gives those results to us. Uh, the next step, and of course, because of COVID, we have not done it recently. Uh, we hope that's going to change. Uh, we we anticipate it all change, but we're we're going to wait this out, and you do it along with other applicants at the same time. Uh, the next step is the ride along. So if you are successful in the police recruit evaluation, you get signed up for a ride along. You join our patrol shift on any given night. Uh, you get partnered up with a member. You get to see what policing in the US is all about. You get to listen to the radio, respond to calls, ask lots of questions and see if this career, if you've never done anything like this, if this is really what you want to do, because now you're getting into it pretty, pretty deep. Uh, once you have the ride along uh, and you're successful in that, you move on to our panel interview. And our panel interview is the same thing. It's kind of, it's, it's, it's essentially a behavioral based interview. And that is uh, with members of our senior management team. Uh, it's approximately three inspectors uh, and at the same time, it, it's a pretty comfortable environment. Uh, they're, they're trying to get the most out of you. So again, rehearse that star format. Look at the competencies on our website. There are no tricks, no surprises. We, we want everyone to be successful here. So ha have a look at that. And that gives you a good idea of what we're, what we're seeking for or what we're looking for, sorry. Uh, if you are successful in the, in, the, uh, in the panel interview, you move on to our background stage. And our background stage consists of a medical examination, a psychological examination, and a polygraph test. 
uh, and then uh, a meeting with our background investigator. Uh, the background typically is the longest part of the entire process. It can take anywhere from one to two months. Uh, with COVID, the numbers are getting a little bit shorter uh, time-wise, and the reason for that is that we're not having our investigators go out and physically meet with people. They're actually doing it just like this online on Zoom, and they're having those conversations where I can ask questions about Kevin and learn more about him uh, and, and put, put a nice package together. Once that package is complete, the, the background investigator meets with myself and Eamon presents your file to us. And it's a pretty thorough, uh, we, we essentially learn everything about you. Uh, so it gives us a really good understanding of who you are. And that's important to us because, again, we want to make sure that you are a good fit for New West and vice versa, that we are a good fit for you. Uh, once you complete your background investigation, you then move on to the executive interview. And that is uh, an interview with our chief constable and our deputy chief constable. Uh, that's that's just a conversation that you guys uh, will have with them. It's, it's for them to get to know you and again to make sure you are a good fit for this agency and that we're a good fit for you. I think that's a, the ultimate goal here is that you're entering a, a profession and a career where um, sometimes your friends aren't going to understand what you do. Uh, sometimes your 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 spouse or your partner might not totally get what you do. So you're it's really important to rely on the people that you work with uh, to get you through those times. So. I, and that, that's why it's such a thorough process and such a detailed process. Uh, and then after that, you get the, the great news of a, a job offer and you get to go to the police academy. So that's in detail what the whole process looks like. Uh, so if you are, like I said, if you're a lateral member, uh, a serving member with NBC, you are not required to run the POPAT or the written exam. Uh, you're not required to do a, a ride along. You're more than welcome to. And you're also not required to do the police recruit evaluation. Uh, for out-of-province members, uh, the, the process is changing right now. So the, my last contact with police services was just a couple weeks ago. So as of this moment, you are required to do a POPAT and a, a written entrance, not entrance exam, a written exam. And it's a test you on the knowledge of the, the, the laws in BC or specifically the municipal bylaws and the provincial laws. So that's in the process of potentially getting removed so uh, again police services has has made mention that there, there's a chance that's going to be removed we haven't been given a, a clear timeline or date that's being uh, that's being uh, that's essentially in their hands right now but we told that the process is in the works so if that were to happen for members outside of the province you would not be required or you, yeah you would not be required to run the popat or uh, do do the exam we would encourage you though if you are in town when you when you, when you do make it to the suitability interview and you are uh, lining up for your panel whenever we will we'll, we line those things up for you and we'll, and we'll do our best to line it up in a couple of weeks so uh, we, we understand that you don't want to make 15 trips out here so now uh, we will initially have our phone conversation and then once the process gets, gets going uh, we'll try to get you out here for a full week and we'll try to line up a lot of these steps in that first week we would encourage you to come out and ride along during that time just to just to kind of show you what new westminster police is about uh, and make sure again that this is an agency that you you want to apply to and make sure that uh, your mind is, is set on that uh, and those are the only steps that we uh, that currently that we've excluded for uh exempt members and i think that's the same for the majority of agencies within uh within the lower mainland so again that kind of that kind of sums it up i know I, I talked about a lot of steps here but all those steps are available on our website i encourage you to look at it uh, and if you have any more questions or if you have any uh yeah, if you have any questions please reach out to us we'll be happy to answer them just can I dive in just on the interviews? Um, just for a recommendation, I know uh, Sanjay mentioned the STAR formula. So that's uh, really diving into the, what, what is the situation or task, what were your actions, and what was the result? So you're really telling a story uh, to the interview team on those competencies. What I recommend, and uh, I've told this, this is more for the um, people who are not currently serving police officers, like they want to start a career in policing, is look at our core competencies. There's, uh, I think, 12 of them on, well, there's six core competencies. There's 12 competencies uh, that we ask about between the two interviews. And what I recommend to know if you're ready to apply is look at the competencies and I'll, I create either a Word document or just a, like a binder with, uh, with pages, and I write the competency at the top, so conflict management. And then I think of a time that I displayed that competency. So basically, 
a behavioral based question is tell us a time when you had to uh, manage conflict between yourself or between others. What did you do? And so I would write out that. So what is the situation or my task? What were my actions and what was my result? And I do that for all the different competencies on the website. And then when, when you sit back and you say, okay, I've got experience in all these different areas, then you answer the question in your own mind, yes, I'm ready to apply for policing. Um, if you've got, you know, a handful of, uh, of different competencies that you're, that you're struggling to fill, like uh, multiple, then that maybe there's some, some other areas that you'd want to, you know, gain some life experience to get those. But I would recommend writing those out for two reasons. One, to answer that question, are you ready to apply? And two, so that you're not caught off guard during a behavioral based interview so that you come prepared, you know what your examples are. Um, you know, some, some examples may not work for the different competencies, but at least you have a general idea of what your experiences are. So that would be my recommendation. Again, look at the website. Uh, they're all listed on the website, all, all the different competencies that we ask about. So um, that, that would be just, yeah, my own little piece of advice to give you. Thank you, Jeff. That was really helpful information, everybody. Um, we're going to now jump into the q and I I want to be cognizant of everyone's time because we're coming up on seven o'clock here on the West Coast. Um, if you haven't already discovered it, the Zoom menu at the bottom of the screen, it has a Q&A icon. So if you haven't already, click on that icon, type your question into the text box, and you are able to ask your question anonymously. For anyone who's asked a question and their name is attached, just to make sure everything's kept anonymous, I will read out those questions and the team can answer. So let's, uh, a lot of these, I think we'll be able to keep it really quick. So first one, what age do you have to be to join NWPD? Yeah, again, that's uh, as long as you're 19 years of age, you are eligible to apply. So yeah, if, if you meet that, that's, uh, that kind of sums it up. I think one of the biggest things we look at is that uh, we, we would like to see applicants with life experience. So not to say that you don't have it at 19, uh, but, but keep that in mind as you, as you go through our, looking to go through our process. And there's another question related to age. So I will ask it now. Someone's asking, 29 year old, years old, female, is that too late to start a career as a police officer? No, absolutely not. Apply. Um, and I think what, <laughs> what's really important to know is now is a good time to apply, uh, whether you're a currently serving member or a brand new police recruit, apply. Um, and that is a, that's a perfect age. Yeah, definitely. Okay. And this one was submitted anonymously, so we can answer this one live. Uh, someone has uh, 17 years of service, currently serving as a sergeant at a major police department. Uh, does previous experience count within your department? Yeah, absolutely it does. So if you were coming over as a 17 year member, you, you, would, you would come over just as that. Uh, so if you were looking to uh, kind of, I think I believe, I, I'm reading here that you're already a sergeant. So you wouldn't be able to, you wouldn't be eligible to be, or to come over as a sergeant. However, our typical process is that you are, uh, for our, our regular members that you are allowed to apply for a leadership position. I think it's five years in a day. Uh, so once you're so for someone like yourself, it's just actually three years in a day. So if you were to come over as a, as a member from another agency and you already have uh, time served, we would take that time into account and then you would only have to work for an additional three years to be eligible to be uh, to apply for a leadership position. Awesome. I have some questions here about people that are in a situation where they have finished school for policing, but they've never worked in the field, are they still eligible to apply? Yeah, so if you finish school for policing, I'm just unclear, like uh, if you finish your degree in say criminology, or if you've actually finished a police academy where, you're, uh, where, where you've been sworn in as a member, uh, either one of those you are eligible to apply though. So uh, I hope that answers that question. If you've, 
completed your, your, your degree in, in criminal justice or, or, or criminology, or even if it's not that, even if it's something different, yes, you're eligible to apply. And of course, if you finished a police academy uh, equivalent, uh, then yes, again, that, that could be transferred over. Okay. Um, this is a good one. Uh, after the initial response to a call, do patrol members carry files or do investigational tasks get, get passed on to a specialized unit? So that's a, that's a good question. Um, it's the answer is both. Um, patrol members do carry files. Uh, they do have diary dates. Uh, they have the ability to investigate the files that they attend. Um, typically, unless it's a more serious file, it will remain with the patrol unit. And with that member, uh, some of the bigger files may get passed on to a uh, major crime unit or uh, our street crime unit if it's a major drug file or something like that. But generally speaking, members do get to carry their own files. And, and even on that note, so if you do have a pretty serious file you're working and it does get sent up to major crime or street crime, uh, depending on shift strength is during that time, you might have the option of actually going to that unit and working with that unit to work on your file. So we've had opportunities for members that or in patrol where they've had a robbery series they're working on, or they've, they've got a good info on a, on a maybe a drug line, uh, and then the numbers look good on the shift, that memory gets sent up to that unit for uh, a block or so or block or two to work on that file, to learn some investigative techniques, and then again, to bring that back down to the road once they are done that. Yeah, and that's highly uh, encouraged for members to go up to those units and spend time with their expertise uh, investigating those files. Okay, I've got another one here. Are overtime opportunities hard to come by? Right now there's lots of overtime. Um, so we're looking to hire. <laughs> um, we, so, you know, apply and uh, hopefully you get a job and, you know, but there is lots of overtime. We also have lots of movie call outs. So a lot of different movie organizations and companies like to film in New Westminster because of the kind of the history of the city. Um, we got a lot of different events, obviously COVID kind of impacted them this last year, but we have a ton of different events, street truck festival that draws about 150,000 people. Um, there was like a music festival and a number of other events all spring and summer, uh, long and even into the winter with different parades. So all those are overtime availabilities, lots of overtime, uh, in the city here. And sorry, Jeff, on that, with the amount of secondments that we do offer, like percentage base for, for the size of uh, New West, if uh, overtime is something that you're looking for, there are, uh, there's opportunities, whether it's IHIT or CFSCU or IGTF, where uh, you can work pretty much as much as you want uh, and make that overtime. Awesome. Okay. So I'm, I know we're going a little over seven o'clock here, but I think we can get in maybe two or three more questions. Um, what are some of the greatest challenges to policing in New Westminster today? Good question. Um, well, there's, no, there's some social issues obviously that uh, we're working to address uh, with regards to Black Lives Matters and defunding of the police and stuff. Our uh, senior management team uh, have put together some strategies and, uh, and planning in, to address some of those issues about uh, change. And um, some of those things have been readily uh, addressed already. And uh, we've made um, massive steps forward to address some of those issues. Obviously, uh, with COVID, uh, funding and financial issues have arisen. Uh, you know, cities not making as much money as they used to with all of their programs not being open. So, you know, this year has been extremely uh, difficult, but I think opening up and at the end of COVID, uh, some of that, those finances will come back. Um, the city is very heavily involved in uh, densification and, uh, and construction. A lot of people are moving into New Westminster. So I think that will, that will turn itself around. Excellent. Okay. Um, do patrol members ride in twos? Simple. No. <laughs> no, single person vehicles for the most part. There are the odd times when there's someone's field training that uh, they will ride in twos, but generally speaking, 
uh, unless members are doing a project, they may be in plain clothes, they ride together uh, to do a work a project or something, but generally speaking, patrol members work uh, single person vehicles. Excellent. And let's see here. Um, final question. From start to finish, what is the average time frame of the application process? Honestly, that a uh, great question. And that's, uh, I can't give you a concrete answer because it varies. Um, it can take a while, but at the same time, we can also rush an application if they need to be. So I'll speak kind of on, on two wavelengths here is that if you are competing for, if you are a new applicant competing for a spot in the police academy, there is kind of a structured timeline there. Uh, it depends when we start things off. So right now we are in the process of recruiting for our, we're actually, we're, we're pretty deep into the process for hiring for our May and potentially even our September class or our fall class. Uh, at the same time, uh, the applications never stop. So it, at the same time, when, when you apply, if, if you were to apply today, you would be considered for the fall and the January class. Uh, if you are a lateral or an exempt member, that's a bit different. So we go at that individual's pace. So if you are looking to, if you're from an agency and then you're saying, I, I want out right now, this is not, say with the RCMP and you got sent somewhere that you're not entirely happy about, and you're, you're, you're saying that, that you want out, we can actually move your application fairly quickly. Uh, you, the nice thing is that you're not competing for an, uh, for an academy class. We're not trying to slot you in for the May class or the September class. We're going at a pace that's good for you and good for us. So if you want things done quickly, we can make things done quickly. Uh, the average time, I say, if we were to really rush something could be about four weeks or so, maybe a little bit more than that, uh, maybe five, but it can be done quickly if you are a current serving member. Awesome, okay. I wanna thank my colleagues for sharing uh, so much helpful information at this evening's information session here. And I wanna thank everyone who tuned in and attended. I know there were some questions that uh, we didn't get a chance to answer. So don't hesitate to reach, us, uh, to reach out to us on social media and ask those questions. Um, or send the recruiting team an email. We're here for you. We're here to walk you through this process. And yeah, don't hesitate to reach out. Excellent. All right. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. I just, Haley, okay. before we go. Sure, sure. Before we go, I just want to mention one more thing that, so uh, again, if, if you are if you are a serving member right now and, and you are looking to talk uh, offline here, and this could be out of the building with myself, Eamon, uh, Kevin, or, or, or Jeff, please send us an email. We're, we're more than happy to facilitate a visit offsite. We would not come in uniform or, or dress in a suit. We would be very casual. We can help answer any additional questions you have or maybe explain the process in a bit more detail if, if, if you're looking for that. But again, if you just have some specific questions or if you wanna talk on the phone, we're more than open to that. Uh, just send us an email at recruiting at nwpolice.org. We'll, be, we'll get back to you and when we can, and we can facilitate that. At the same time, if you are a new applicant and you're looking to get into policing, uh, we're, we're going to announce this on Instagram in a couple of days, but you guys are, gonna, are getting a bit of a heads up on this. Uh, we are hosting, uh, we are looking at a, a recruiting or an application deadline of, of April 30th to be considered for the fall and the winter academy class. So we don't have specific dates of when those classes are starting. We've heard it's going to be uh, September, October for the fall class, and we have not been given a date for the winter class. It's typically January, but again, COVID's changed some things, so we're uncertain of that date. But April 30th is going to be the application deadline to be considered for the fall and the winter class. So please get your applications in. Again, if you have any questions, reach out to us at Recruiting. Uh, we'll be happy to answer your questions. Uh, we'll do our best to answer it as quickly as possible, but please be like, just understand that we get a lot of questions and a lot of applications through. So again, we're, we're looking for your application. If you're ready to apply, please, please put in. Thank you, Sergeant Kumar. That was really important information and I'm glad you got that in. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. Thank you very much. Again, don't hesitate to reach out. Have a good night. Thanks everyone.